Well, hello there, my little goldies, and welcome back to my sanctuary, and welcome back to another video. This is actually going to be a different video today. As you can see, I have some crocheting here. Uh, if you have been a long time watcher of my channel, you know that I do mostly coloring related things on here as well as like journals and fountain pens and, and that kind of thing. But um, I wanted to do some different things on the channel because, um, you know, just to kind of break up, well, I don't want to say the monotony because it's really not the right word, but I just wanted to do some different things because, uh, you know, just to kind of give it like a little bit of extra life and sparkle and, and that. And I do love to crochet, you know, that I love to color, but I also love, love, love to crochet. And I can knit too, but I'm a better crocheter. And so what I thought I would do was just make a video of a crochet chat and wine. <laughs> I do have my glass of wine right here and I'm drinking some Chardonnay. Mm. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. So I like to have my glass of wine or something to drink while I am crocheting. And... Now, like I said, this is a different sort of video. I actually did something like this last year, um, but and, and I got some good responses, and, and I got a lot of new viewers now, and so I wanted to try it again and see if there was going to be an interest in it. And if there is, then I will, um, I will continue making these um, crochet videos if, if I do get enough interest in it. Um, and if you, if you're just here for the coloring, you know, that is perfectly fine. Or if you want to watch this and just color along while I crochet, that is perfectly fine too. But this is going to be pretty much in the format of the color and gabs, but instead of coloring today, I'm going to be crocheting. So I am working on this red and white blanket. And I started this last year, actually, when I was in training to get Alex, my golden retriever, uh, who is my leader dog. So let me just show you what I have been doing with this. This is a red and white blanket. And let me show you the yarn that I'm working with for it. So I have this white yarn. It is Red Heart Super Saver. And I've rolled it up into a ball because sometimes, like, when the yarn starts to get kind of, you know, level down a little bit, um, it wants to get a little bit tangled. So I like to roll it up in a ball when it's, you know, when the yarn is going down. So there's the label to the white. And then I am also working with, um, this is also Red Heart Super Saver. You can get these at like Walmart or like Michael's or something like that. Um, I think you can even find them online, but I think that they're kind of expensive to ship. And then this is Cherry Red. So Cherry Red and then the, the white. And what I am doing with this blanket is I have six rows of red and I'm alternating between rows of double crochet, half double crochet, going back to double crochet, then half double crochet. And then the white has four rows. And again, it's the same pattern. So double crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, and half double crochet. So I've started another, um, an, another section of red because I just got done with the white. And so what I thought we would do today is um, you're just going to see my hands at work crocheting on this bad boy. So I'm sitting on my ugliest sin couch and you can probably see that I am covered up with my little panda blanket. Um, I'm really nice and toasty. It has been just so, so, so cold lately. Now um, I, as you're probably being able to tell, I don't know how many crochet videos that you've seen or if you've seen people crochet. Um, I um, am doing this a little bit differently or I'm holding my yarn a little bit differently. Um, a lot of people, what they will do is they will they will hold the yarn kind of like up higher, like on their on their finger like this. And then their needle hand just kind of does most of the work. Like their left hand doesn't move, but the needle hand does most of the work. Now I do it a little bit differently. Um, I do have a visual impairment and so I do it a little bit differently and so my left hand where I'm holding the yarn I hold it down a little bit low like this on my finger and then my left hand my and the fingers on my left hand do a lot of work I do it mainly by feel so you're gonna see my fingers move a lot and I'm feeling the stitches actually on the needle I'm actually kind of testing things out on the needle with my fingers and then I, I pull the loops through and then again I test it you know I just I kind of feel it I do it tactily with my fingers on my left hand like so and it works for me I mean you know it works for me my stitches look good you know they come out uniform um, so this method works for me and uh, so that's that's how I've been doing it okay and uh, so you're going to see my left hand moving a lot but you know that's okay so 
I could like turn the camera around so you can actually see my face while I am chatting with you guys, but I thought we would just do it this way. That way you could kind of see how the stitches are coming off. Um, some of you I know like to crochet, some of you don't know how, and that's perfectly fine. Um, now I don't know if there are many of these like um, crochet and chat videos out there on YouTube. Um, there's plenty of crochet tutorials, but I just don't know about the I just don't know about the uh, the the actual crochet and chatting. And I'm just I'm gonna move the camera down just a little bit. Um, move the camera down just a little bit so that we can hopefully get a little bit of a better view. So um, I'm just I'm going in and I'm I'm just kind of crocheting on this. So I'm doing my six rows of red right now. I've just started the red. Uh, so, how is everybody doing? I hope you are all doing well. And like I said, I just I wanted to do something different here because um, you know just to kind of give it a new life on the channel, and also you know I just I like to just you know try different things out on the channel and just show things that I enjoy, um, you know just for some new inspiration and you know just to see how you guys like it. Um, and I've seen some of that going on. Like I'll just mention, you know, kind of a few different channels like Anne Hatfield. She does both coloring and her Avon things on her channel. Um, I do mostly coloring with journals and fountain pen and, and, you know, I talk about writing and, and that kind of thing. Um, Shalene recently did, I guess what was called mukbang video. And I, I have never heard of this before. And it just goes to show that, oh my gosh, you can find just about anything out there to watch. And so I guess what this is, um, and I've read a little bit about it, but I guess I guess the, the thing of it is, is you, is uh, the idea is to sit down with an audience or something and eat like large amounts of food. You know, they want you to, I, I guess the whole thing is to like pig out, you know, um, according to the wiki art article, you know, the article on Wikipedia, uh, you're supposed to eat like large amounts of food with an audience and interact with them and, and that kind of thing. And it's, it's, uh, you know, you can do it like however you want to, like on YouTube or Facebook or whatever, you know, but, um, so Shalene did something like that where she sat down with some stir fry that she made and she was just talking about, um, how she made it and you know how good it was and you you saw her just kind of sit down there and eat she ate and she chatted and so you got to watch her finish her meal and she talked about like how she made the the stir fry and then she talked about like uh you know some coloring stuff and you know what she was reading and and her book reviews and stuff that she does and I thought that was a really cool idea and it and uh I just thought that was a really cool idea I mean you know not everybody would want to sit down and eat on a YouTube video, <laughs> but you know, it just goes to show that, like I said, you, you can, you can find just about anything out there. Um, and I guess, I guess there's been quite a few mukbang videos out there. I have never watched any, but it, it was kind of, uh, it was kind of cool actually. And, um, yeah, it was kind of cool actually. So if you guys would like to see me do something like that, I can certainly do that. Now I don't like, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of in a food rut right now. Like, um, I used to enjoy cooking a lot more than I actually enjoy cooking now. Um, but you know, I've been kind of just in a rut. Like we've been just like it, cooking used to be more enjoyable than it is now. Now it's kind of like, well, it's something I got to do cause you know, we got to eat. But, um, I have like so many recipes and I have so many cookbooks and you know, there's so many things that you can find online. Um, so if, if you guys want me to do a mukbang video, I can certainly do that. Hey, you know what? I'm game for new things, you know? Um, and, uh, it's not really an original idea because, you know, it is out there. Um, there's been, you know, there's been quite a few videos out there before Shalene did hers. And, uh, I just, I just thought it was kind of cool. So if you guys want me to do something like that, I will do that. Um, if there's anything that you want me to try, like if you want me to, I, I, geez, I know the cinnamon challenge was real popular a few years ago. Ick. Ew, 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 ew. <laughs> um, ew, ew, ew. 
<laughs> um, I've never done it. Um, I've tasted like cinnamon by itself with no sugar, no nothing, and it is pretty nasty stuff. Um, but um, if there's like some kind of like a fun challenge or something that you guys would want to see me do, or if you want to like maybe see more of Caleb and Alex, um, if you want to see how Alex works like um, as a leader dog, I can do like a little vlog of that. Um, I will have to get my husband to film it though because um, I can't film and walk and show him at the same time. Um, and I, I have been meaning to also do a video on my gadgets that, uh, that I use to help with my visual impairment. Like, um, you know, there's, and I got a little tangle in my yarn here. There's gadgets that I have that make my life easier, I should say, as a visually impaired person. And so I've been meaning to do that video and I just, I just haven't done it yet. I have to get everything in one place and, uh, and to be able to film it. Um, that way I can kind of demonstrate how it works and so forth. But um, I will be doing that video so that you guys can see, you know, just the different gadgets and things I use to kind of make my life a little bit easier as a visually impaired person. And I feel like that stitch. Uh, one thing with crocheting is like if you make a, a little oopsie, you can rip it out pretty easily. A lot easier than you can with knitting. So um, I've been meaning to make that video and I will do that. I know some of you expressed some interest in that. Um, but yeah, let me know if there's anything in particular that you want me to film or that you guys want to see. We will do that. We can do some mukbang. We can do some crocheting. Um, I can knit for you guys on camera. Although, like I said, I am a much better crocheter than I am a knitter. <laughs> but I still like to play with it when I get in the mood, you know, to knit. I turn mainly to the crocheting when I want to do something like this. Um, I've also got some latch hook stuff. Um, Latch hook, I guess, used to be like real popular like in the 70s and 80s, but I have I have a couple of kits in the other room that I have it like I started, I actually started one project and never finished it. I've had that sitting in there for quite a long time. So if you guys want me to get that out, we can do some latch hooking on, um, on camera. Um, I can do some scrapbooking on camera with you guys. Um, can do some art journaling with you guys. Um, or if you want me to like do some writing videos, like how, how, um, how I come up with like my stories or whatever, like, um, show you, I can show you like how I come up like with, um, if you look in the description section on my videos and scroll kind of down toward the bottom of it, I know I have a really long description, but I have a lot of links in there. Um, on the bottom is, uh, is my Sim Stories blog. It's Simming with Sweet Nightingale and it's sweetnightingale.com. And uh, so what I do is I write, uh, I write stories and I illustrate it with my Sims 3 game, meaning that I take pictures of the characters and the what's going on and I, I use that to kind of support the text that I write. So I can show you how I do that um, in my Sims 3 game and how I write it up and so forth. Um, I can show you like how I come up with like other stories that are not Sims related. I also have been meaning to make a video on character journals or character diaries. Now a character diary is um, where you make up a character. Uh, it can either be one that you are writing in a story or just a character that you've had in your head that you're kind of massaging or whatever, you know. And basically you take a notebook or you take a journal and you write their diary for them. You write their journal for them as if you were that character. And it's a great, to me, I think it's a great writing tool. You may think, oh my God, she's crazy. She is totally a stinking nut. So, and yes, I am. You can ask Corey, I am totally crazy. <laughs> you can ask Katrina, I am totally crazy. If Stephanie were still here, you could ask her and she would tell you the same thing. Uh, but, you know, we no longer have Stephanie, unfortunately. And I miss her. I miss her so much, you guys. I really do. I miss Stephanie. But um, anyway, um, it may sound crazy, but honest... To me, I find it a very, very helpful writing tool because it helps me to get in the head of that character that, that I am um, working on or that I am writing. And I love like character development. I love seeing growth of characters. I love, um, you know, I just, I love, I, I love like, you know, character development and, and making the characters as, as, um, I don't want to say like realistic realistic you know because like there's a lot of fantasy that I write and so um you're gonna find like in fantasy you're gonna find characters like with you know supernatural abilities and stuff but 
I try to make them, you know, come to life as much as I can um, instead of being like, you know, one dimensional or whatever. Um, I love doing um, character development. And so I find that doing the character diary or the character journal is very helpful um, as a writing tool for me. And um, I can show you like my, um, I did a video of this maybe a couple years ago. I can show you my current journals that I'm using. And I showed like anything from the journal that I was writing in for myself to like my creative outlet to my bullet journal, you know, that I had to, and then I got into the, the character diaries that I had or the character journals. And so I showed all that and I can do an updated video on that if you guys are interested in seeing that. Um, in fact, I just may do it and just kind of see how it goes. Um, but if it's something that you would want to see, let me know. Um, and if there's anything that you have seen out there that you want me to try on this channel, let me know. And if it's, you know, as long as it's not like dangerous or like violent or, um, or like, you know, sexual and content, you know, that kind of thing. Um, I, I won't do anything like that, but, um, if there's anything, um, you know, within reason, of course, if there's anything that you want me to try, you know, just let me know and we can do that. And also, like I said, if you want me to show Caleb and Alex more, I can do that. My, 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 uh, my little goldies that I have right here, <laughs> the furry ones, the furry little goldies, <laughs> the four legged goldies, the furry four legged goldies. There you go. And you know what? With me covered up with these blankets, I am really getting, I'm really getting hot. <laughs> One thing about crocheting is that you get, you get kind of warm. Um, but it has been a toasty day, or uh, toasty. It's been toasty in here, but it's been just so cold. Like, you know what? Our winter wasn't really all that bad, but it, when it hit, man, it, it hit. And uh, it hit. <laughs> so it's been like in the 20s. I think one day it was in the 30s. It got down to like 8. And now I am recording this on Thursday. This is January 24th. And last night I was actually supposed to visit another Lions Club. And um, the guy called me up yesterday morning and um, said that they have ice down there everywhere, you know, where I was supposed to go. They had ice everywhere. Um, the schools were closed that day. And um, a lot of the guys weren't, um, weren't going to be there. Um, I say a lot of the, I don't know if there's any women in the club, but he just said that there's, there were going to be like five people that, that weren't going to be there. And it's kind of a small club anyway. Um, so I just, so, you know, he and I decided that it was, you know, probably better if I just come in February. So he's going to get back with me and I'm looking to show up in February to go visit them. And, um, which, uh, my husband said, uh, it's not going to hurt my feelings any cause he has to drive me. He obviously has to drive me. So he's like, it's not going to hurt my feelings any. So we're going to go down in February for that, barring anything unforeseen, <laughs> like weather. <laughs> you know, hopefully, you know, because you can still get some bad weather in February. So, you know, hopefully it'll work out that time. Um, yeah. So I am almost done with row one of this particular section. And I think I'm going to grab a little sip of wine. Give me one minute here. Give me just one minute here. Mm. Love it. Mm. I love me my wine. <laughs> now, speaking of um, going back to like different things on the channel, before I did the coloring stuff or the journaling stuff, um, before I did that, I actually did, you know, some, some quite a few different things on the channel because I didn't really know where this channel was going to go. Like, let me kind of give you, let me give you a little rundown of my YouTube history. And then, and I can tell you like some things that I learned from, from running a YouTube channel. Cause I've actually got two YouTube channels. <clears throat> um, my YouTube history. Now I did have this, like I created a YouTube account and this account was what I created to be able to watch videos and make comments and stuff. But I never really did anything on it for like years and years. Like I just, I didn't do anything on it. You know, I never uploaded videos of my own, just use it to comment. Um, so anyway, um, in 2011, like at the end of 2011, um, I made another account, um, uh, because I wanted to make, um, Sims 
Sims gameplay videos. Now, The Sims is a simulation game where you make your virtual people and you move them into a house and you get them a job and you basically live their lives for them. It's been, um, <laughs> John, John calls it, um, my husband, he, he calls it, uh, he, he calls it playing with virtual dollhouses. And basically that's kind of what you do. Um, I had a friend of mine that called it pl playing uh, virtual Barbies and that's basically, you know what, that's, it's, it, it's pretty much what you do, honestly, you know, because you, you pick out like whatever clothes that they're going to wear, you, you move them into their house, you try to get them you know, you get them, it, it's basically you're, you're, you're having your, your, you're playing God, I guess, over like these virtual people who need to live their lives and, and, you know, up their skills and to fulfill, uh, you know, their, their lifetime happiness and stuff and, and up their career and all that. So anyway, I wanted to make Sims gameplay videos. And so I made this other channel <coughs> and starting, I think in like December 2011, um, I started making these videos and I got like, I was never like one of the big, big, big fish in that community, but I got rather popular, you know, I got, I got rather popular. Um, I ended up with like over 8,000 subscribers over there. Um, and you know, a lot of people watched my videos and, and I did, I did a lot of that for a very long time. And now that channel is obviously still in existence. Um, I still do put content up there, but, um, as time went on and as a new incarnation of the Sims came into being, um, you know, people are fickle and there, there's a whole crop of, of newer YouTubers that, that came along to do these kinds of videos and, and people kind of move on to newer newer things, I guess. And so that channel over there, I, I will say that I do have, I still, I do have a few loyal fans over there that still follow me, that still comment, but my following over there has gotten quite small. And I have mixed emotions about that because I do, I did, and I do enjoy making those videos. Um, and it's kind of sad to see people move on, you know, because you obviously you want people to watch your videos, you know, when you are, um, you know, when you are a content creator, you do want people to watch your videos. And so I have mixed emotions about the lack of following I have over there now. But at the same time, it's like, you know, I've also moved on to other things. I mean, I have this channel over here now as well. Um, so the Sims channel kind of took a, it took second wheel, I guess, or third wheel, whatever you want to say. But I mean, I still do put content up there, but, and I do, ha I still do have a few followers over there and that's good. You know, as long as, as long as there's interest, you know, um, I'll keep making stuff over there. It's just not as often as I used to do it. It's just not as often as I used to do it. Um, and I, and I have this channel over here now, which, which, uh, you know, has gotten, um, which has gotten more of an audience. Um, so anyway, that channel is still going, but then I decided that, um, I wanted to do something with this channel over here too. Um, at the time that I was thinking about it, the vlogs were becoming very, very popular where people vlogged like their life and all that. And, I was thinking about doing something like that, but I really don't live an exciting life. <laughs> you know, um, I didn't have like, you know, you've seen vloggers like with, you know, with a bunch of kids, like, um, there's this one that I watched where I think they had like, um, quadruplets or something like that, quads or quints or something like that. And so, um, I guess she, the, it's a, it was a couple, it was a man and wife and uh, she had fertility issues. And so, you know, they went through the fertility treatments and, and they ended up with like five, four or five kids. And so they, they vlogged about their lives and they've done that for years, years, you know, they've done that since before the, these kids were born. And I think these kids are like, you know, six or seven now. And, uh, so, you know, they've vlogged about that. Um, there's another couple I watched where she's got like cystic fibrosis and, uh, and so they, they vlog about their lives and, and all that, but I really don't live an exciting life. You know, I mean, pretty much like what we do here, <laughs> you know, when I'm not coloring or whatever is I'm home alone with, with, with the doggies and, you know, it's not like I can jump in a car and go places, you know, pretty readily. I have to get somebody to drive me and, so, you know, there's really nothing really for me to vlog about because I just kind of do my thing around here. Um, and 
now I did do one, like I said, I did do the, the shopping trip vlog, um, you know, when I went to Galesburg to visit Corey, and that was great. You know, if I had more opportunities, I guess, to, to do stuff like that, you know, then you'd see more vlog videos like that. But, um, you know, because I'm just kind of putzing around here, um, there's really nothing for me to film. <laughs> So, you know, I decided to kind of not do the, the vlog um, on a regular basis. Um, I will do something, like I said, if it's a special occasion or like if I'm out like with Corey or something like that, you know, I, you know, for, for a video like that, you know, then you'll see a vlog style video. Or like, you know, when I went to Leader Dog to get Alex, you saw vlog style videos there because, you know, I actually had something to vlog about. So anyway, um... So when I decided to do something with, with this channel over here, um, I was really just contemplating, you know, what to do. So then I started doing like product reviews of, you know, different things that I bought on Amazon. Like if you go way, 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 way back on my channel, um, I did a review of a soda stream machine that I bought. I did a review of a Keurig that I had and I, I showed you how it made the coffee and and uh, in the soda stream I showed you how it made the the pop and the carbonated water and all that so you know I did I did stuff like that on on the channel um, I also did like one cooking video I actually did one cooking video where I made a chicken and rice dish I will try to find that and link that for you in the description section of the of this um, video so that you can go and watch that if you want to but that was like some years back that was like that was quite a few years ago honestly so I did do that uh, let's see I am at the end of this row so I'm going to chain two and I'm gonna flip over my project because I have to start and make a new and make another row here start a new row um, so I did do one cooking video on the channel also on the channel, I did a, uh, I guess you could call it a vlog video or vlog style video where um, Caleb was getting his Canine Good Citizen Award. So I, you know, took him to be evaluated for that. And I'm going to just move the camera just a little bit more down. I did take him to be evaluated for that. And um, so we did that. Uh, so, I mean, there's been, there's been... A few different things on this channel, you know, kind of like early on, you know, when I decided to try to do something, you know, different with the channel. Um, and then I started getting into the journals and the fountain pens. And so I started doing like journal hauls and journal collections and fountain pen stuff. And uh, I got that kind of tight right there. So I started doing that on the channel. And... Uh, and that's kind of where it took off. Then I got into the coloring and I, and then it just, then I started just doing mostly coloring videos on here. And mostly for a while, like mostly it was hauls or, you know, showing like different books. Um, and then I started doing like the, the color and gabs on the channel. So that's kind of how my YouTube experience came into existence. Um, I was trying to find a niche for this channel, you know, or try to make it, you know, to, to, to see how it was going to evolve because I really didn't know what I was going to do with this channel. I was actually, my original goal was just to actually put like a bunch of different things on here of, you know, areas of interest on here, which I still do want to do. You know, I'm, that's why I'm kind of doing this crochet, uh, because it is another area of interest and I want to, you know, show different things. But, um, that's kind of what I originally started out doing this channel was just a bunch of areas of interest, a bunch of um, product reviews, and um, I did one cooking video, and then I had the one with Caleb getting his canine good citizen. I also did a reaction to the Skype laughter chain, which was one of those like funny, you know, funny videos. And I've been requested to do an updated one on that, so oh lordy help me. <laughs> Lordy help me. Oh, also on the channel, I have a short video clip of Caleb and Abby, my first golden retriever playing, is when um, Abby retired, and then I brought home Caleb, and they, you know, they got along good, and so they were, I had a little short video clip of them two playing. It was cute. So, I mean, there's been, like, in the beginning especially, there's been just a lot of different things on the channel, um, and then it just kind of evolved into mainly coloring, um, journals, and fountain pens, and that kind of thing, but um, like I said, if there's anything that you want me to 
do on the channel for giggles and grins or whatever, um, let me know and we can do that. So several things that I have learned from running a YouTube channel. Um, you have to have a bit of a thick skin <laughs> when you run a YouTube channel. Um, and I think and I, and I think it's, it's um, um, I guess depending on what community the channel falls into, it, it just, oh my gosh, I think I'm, am I, I think I'm doing the wrong stitch here. Like I've been, I've been talking so much, I'm doing the wrong stitch here. Oh my gosh. Gotta go back. Gotta go back. See, I gotta, see, I'll show you how easy it is to rip your mistake out. Like if you make a mistake, you just pull on the yarn. Whoops, you just pull on the yarn and the stitches come out. But I think I've been doing the wrong stitch, so I have to go back. I have to go back because I think I've been doing the wrong stitch. So, um, all right. So then when you get back to where you need to be, you put your hook back into the, the loop. Oops. I'm gonna go back and redo my chain. I'll just go back to where I knew that I was okay. So when you get back to where you need to go, you you see the you see the loop right there, and you just put your hook back into it. Whoops, put your hook back into it like so, and then you continue where you left off. So back at the end of this row. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do my double crochet. Whoops, do my double crochet. Then I'm gonna chain two and then we're going to go into the half doubles because I think I was doing the wrong stitch like I was I was uh <laughs> I was chatting so much that I wasn't paying attention <laughs> and that happens sometimes but um let me get where I need to be so anyway like I said some things that I've been that I've learned from doing a YouTube channel is that you do have to, to have a thicker, you do have to have kind of a thick skin when you do it because no matter like what community your channel falls into, you're always going to find nasty people. You're always going to find a troll or somebody who just wants to be mean. Um, you know, somebody who just wants to, you know, they think it's cool to hide behind their keyboard and to, and to say just, nasty, rude, obnoxious things to people. And so no matter what what community your channel falls into, you're going to you're going to run into that. And you're going to run into a tr you know trolls, you're going to run into just, you know, nasty nasty people. And some communities it's even more so because like um in the gaming community, and I, and I know I've said this before, but in the gaming community as a whole, um, I have seen just some horrible, horrible, horrible things to, said to people. And to me, there's just no excuse for it. You know, there's just, there's just no excuse to behave that way. So in some communities, you're going to find that more so than others. Um, the coloring community is, is pretty tame, really. Um, although, I mean, it's, it's had its moments, you know, it's had its times of drama and all that. But you know what? I think each community goes through that. Um, but some communities, I think, are more supportive than others, um, in my opinion. So you do have to have you do have to have a bit of a thicker skin when you're doing YouTube because you're gonna, you know, you are gonna run into some nasty people. And the more popular you get, the chan the more of a chance that that's gonna happen. Um, the more popular you get, the more times you're gonna see dislikes on your videos. And when you know my my way of thinking that is if you f if you have more likes than dislikes on a video then then you're doing good um but a lot of times you're going to see dislikes on on your videos especially you know the more popular you get the more you're going to see that and people just go on there and they just they just dislike a video just just for the heck of it you know just for the hell of it um they they put the thumbs down on it you know they dislike it and and they but they won't leave a comment to explain why and so you know, to me, that's very cowardly. You know, they just, they do it for just the, the hell of it, I guess. And, um, it's not fair. It's not right in my opinion, but it's out there. It's still going to happen. Um, the only way that it would not happen is if YouTube discontinued the dislike function on the, on there, but I don't think that that's going to happen. So my way of thinking is if you get more likes than you do dislikes, then you're doing good. And you can always go into the settings and disable, um, 
like there's a, a setting that you can go in there and you can you can disable whether or not people can see how many likes or dislikes your video gets. You'll just see the the function on there where you can like or dislike, but you won't see how many you won't see how many likes the video gets or how many dislikes the video gets. Um, so if you want to hide that, you can in your settings. If you're concerned with that, you know there's you can hide that. Um, also, what I've learned is that. Um, it's, it's definitely best to interact with your followers. Um, you don't want to do a video and then, you know, you get a bunch of comments on it and stuff and then, <coughs> and then like you take this like high and mighty like attitude, like, oh, I'm famous. I don't have to, you know, I don't have to talk to people, you know, kind of thing. So it's best to interact with your fans. Um, it's best to interact with your followers. Um, it's best to try to keep as positive as you can. Um, who wants to click on a video and see somebody like, you know, bawling on camera the whole time or complaining and bitching and moaning all the time? You know, who wants, who wants to watch that, you know? Um, so I try to, you know, when I do my videos, I try to keep it as positive as I can. Um, there are times that I will rant, like, you know, yesterday I was, um, when I put up my Color and Gab video, I was ranting about my internet woes, and I was trying to keep a sense of humor about it, like, I, you know, I wasn't, like, I mean, I was, I was kind of talking about, like, how, you know, it, how it started happening, and what we were going through, and all that, um, so I was kind of ranting a little bit, but I was trying to keep a sense of humor about it, and, uh, and so forth, but, yeah, I mean, so it's it's okay to do that, but just, you know, don't make your whole video about, like, doom and gloom and, and oh, woe is me, and, and oh, my gosh, like, I'm so mistreated, and, and that kind of thing. Um, people gravitate more to positivity, and so I try to keep that um, on my channel as much as I can. Um, like, for example, you know, I don't sit there and, and bitch and moan about, oh my gosh, I'm visually impaired and I can't do this and I can't do that. And, and, oh, I'm, I, woe, woe is me. And, oh my gosh. And, you know, I don't do that. Like my, my way of thinking is that, um, yeah, you know, there's things that I have difficulty with and there's things that I cannot do like drive and, uh, and I cannot surf. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? That is okay um, because there are plenty of things that I can do and plenty of things that I'm actually quite good at. And so it's best to, to be grateful for what you have versus, you know, pissing about what you don't have. Um, I mean, we all get into that kind of slump. Like, you know, we all, we all have our moments. We all get into a box. But, you know, the, the thing of it is, is, is how do you get yourself out of that box, you know, if you get in there? So, you know, I try not to get myself into that box. Um, you know, I mean, I, I've, I've have, I have had my moments, believe me, but, um, I, I try not to, uh, I try not to, I try to get myself out of it as quickly as I can. Like, um, for example, I went through a slump, like with my coloring and with the, with the YouTube, like I kind of hit like a YouTube wall. And for a long time, like I just, I didn't make videos. Like I went maybe a couple weeks without making a video and, you know, um, I don't like to do that. I do not like to do that at all. Um, and that's, that gets to another point that I'm going to talk about in a minute, but, um, I don't like to, um, I don't like to go for a long time without making a video or to let people know what, like if I'm not making a video, I, I like to, you know, try to let people know that there's not going to be a video for a while because of X, Y, Z reason. Um, but I kind of hit a slump and for a long time I just didn't make a video. And I, I was going through a time where I just didn't know where I belonged in the coloring community, um, you know, because of things, you know, there's things that happened and uh, I just didn't know where I fit anymore. And so I just, I decided that, um, Instead of like, you know, coming on camera and, and, you know, having a pity party or coming on camera and not being as cheerful as I normally am, um, I felt it was best to just kind of, you know, take a little break and just not do it for a while. And then when I did come back, you know, then I would find the joy in it again. So um, that's what I did. That's what I did, and so um, back making videos. We're I think we're back in full swing. I've had quite a bit of content up my coloring book collections and the the shopping trip and the the massive Blick haul and Five Below and my coloring gab and and that's another thing too. Or uh, the color long and the coloring gab and that's another thing too. Like when you know when Stephanie died, like um, it hit me hard, you know, because like she and I like we were besties, you know, and it just it hit me hard like when she passed very suddenly. And so, 
Um, it, it's, it was, it was hard for me to make videos after that for a while, but you know, we're back. We're, we got the mojo back, I think. And, uh, yeah. So that brings me to the next point. Um, when you, when you are a YouTuber, um, you're, you're going to have best results if you have, um, content uploaded regularly. Like, you're not going to do as well, like let's say you upload a video, then you let a month go by, then you upload another video, then you let maybe six weeks go by, you upload a video, then you let maybe two weeks go by. Um, it's best to have like regular content um, if you can. Um, most, I think that most, most of the successful channels has something up every day, um, like every single day. Like, um, there's people like in the gaming community, like they'll have stuff up like every single day. And those I think are the ones that are most successful. But, you know, that isn't always possible. You know, people have lives to live and, uh, you know, my, as much as I love doing YouTube, as much as I love doing this stuff, um, it is not feasible for me to always have something uploaded every day. Um, number one, you know, because of the visual impairment, I have to do a lot of very, very close editing, uh, you know, because there are things things that like long pauses or something, you know, like when I'm looking for a color pencil, um, you know, because my field of vision is limited. Um, it takes me a little bit longer to find a color, uh, or like when I am doing a color and gab, um, the, you know, my head is in the way a lot. And so I have to try to, to edit some of the really bad parts of that out there. So my videos, I have to do a lot of close editing because I can't just slap it together and upload. I mean, I could, I guess I could, but I don't think it would be as good if I did that. Um, cause there'd be just a lot of, of like under design, you know, things that, that would be kind of weird. I guess, I mean, not weird, but like, um, what am I trying to say? Um, like long pauses and stuff, like, you know, those would get kind of boring. Like if I left all that in there, if I left more of my head being in the way in there, you know, then you're not going to see the picture as well. Uh, you know, that kind of thing. So I feel like I have to put my videos through a lot more editing than, than what most YouTubers do. But um, for me to make a quality video, that's what it takes. And if that's what it takes, you know, that is fine. You know, that is fine with me. But because of that, and because I do have a life to live, you know, because I do have things that I have to do, um, I'm, you know, very active in the Lions Club. And, you know, we have our pen club that we go to. And, and you know, I, I have other responsibilities. Um, that, you know, that means that I cannot always sit and do um, a YouTube video to put up every day. Um, I try to have content up as, as often as I can, but, you know, it doesn't always happen every day. Um, I try to film, I try to film like several things at once. Like I try to film like one video, then another video, and, and I try to film, you know, several different things. And then that way I do have content ready to be uploaded and, and released and stuff. But, um, you're going to be more successful if you have regular content to, to send out to your viewers. Um, let's see another thing. Um, it's good to have your social media. I'm not always one that sits on social media all the time. Now, if I sat on Facebook regularly, I'd probably have a lot more viewers and subscribers, but you know, I don't, <laughs> again, it kind of goes back to, you know, other things that I have to do. And, you know, my time isn't always my own. So, you know, I don't have, I don't always have time to just, um, sit on Facebook for like eight hours a day. You know, I just, I can't do it, nor do I want to, because, you know, that's to me, I don't think that's being very productive with your time. <laughs> um, you know, I like to try to at least have something to show for it. Um, what else? Um, you know, just, just have a good positive attitude and interact with your, with your followers and, you know, show them the respect that they deserve and they will show you the respect as well. Um, don't feed the trolls. You know, if you get a troll on your channel, do not feed the trolls because that's exactly what they want. That is exactly what they want. Um, <laughs> Some of them are very persistent and they won't leave you alone. I've actually had that happen before. Um, so it's best to just, uh, it's best to just like, uh, 
it's best to just ignore them. You know, take, like if you see something like that on your channel, just take the comment off and, uh, and block them. You know, that's, that's what I've, that's what I do. And I kind of learned that like from my Sims channel, you know, cause I've, I tried to, um, <coughs> which comes to another thing that, that I've learned about YouTubers or at least those of us like in the coloring community is we try to, we try to, you know, we try to make, we try to make everybody happy. You know, we try to, we try to make as many people as happy as we can. Um, but that isn't always, you know, that doesn't always happen. You're not going to please everybody. And I was always that way. Like, you know, I don't like to hurt people's feelings. I try to accommodate people as much as I can. And so when I started with my Sims channel and I would get like these nasty comments and I would be like, you know, well, I'm sorry you feel that way, and, and, uh, and I'm sorry you feel that way, and, you know, my channel, uh, my channel obviously isn't for you, and if they got really nasty, you know, then I would, then I would say, you know, then, then, you know, then I would, you know, then I would call them out on it, but, um, I found that it's just best to just, um, delete it, you know, if you see it, delete it as quickly as you can, um, don't even respond back. And then if it's real bad, if it's really, 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 really bad, um, block them. I've gotten quite familiar with that block button, <laughs> especially on my Sims channel. And I've, I've had to do that over here a few times too. Not, it doesn't happen very often, but, um, I've, I've had that happen before. So those are just a few things that I've learned um, from from running a YouTube channel. And again, you know, going back to like you're not you're not going to please everybody, and you know that's another thing that you have to learn when you're when you know when you're doing a YouTube channel. Not everybody's going to like your channel. Not everybody's going to like your videos, and that's okay. Um, if they actually come on and they say well, and if they're polite about it, now keep in mind if they're polite about it. Um, they're like, well, you know, this channel isn't for me or whatever. Sometimes you see that, sometimes you don't. And it's like, well, you know, I'm sorry you feel that way. And, you know, um, I'm sure there's channels out there that will meet your needs. And, you know, and I'm sorry mine isn't. But, you know, it, but but if you try to change things to please, like, everybody, you're, you're, you're fighting a losing battle. It just ain't going to happen. So my advice is... Um, if you're thinking about running a YouTube channel is, is you do you, 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 you do you, you do what makes you feel most comfortable. You do you, you be genuine. Um, don't be fake. You know, I hate fake people. I really do. I hate fake people. Um, be as genuine as you can. Um, be real, you know, you do you. And if people, if you enjoy what you do, then people are going to sense that and they're going to, they're going to enjoy what you do. Um, so that is what I learned from running a YouTube channel. <laughs> That's what I learned from running a YouTube channel. Oh, um, other things that you can do. Uh, have giveaways, like when you hit milestones, have giveaways. Um, you, attract, you attract an audience that way too. Be creative about it. Um, what I've also found out too is when you do giveaways, you're gonna find a lot of people come out of the woodwork that may not have watched you. Um, or, you know, you, you might find lurkers that have watched you and, and come out, you know, to enter the giveaway, and that's fine. But what I, you know, what, what kind of peeves me a little bit is um, when you do a giveaway, you get people that come out of the woodwork that have never watched you, and then, you know, they make a comment, like, on your video. Then after the giveaway is over, um, you don't see them anymore. Like, they will either unsub, and you don't see them again, or... Um, they may still be subbed, but, you know, they, they stay in, in lurk mode. So they come out of the woodwork just to enter the giveaway. <laughs> and so you're going to, you're going to see that. Like when you do your giveaways, you're, you're going to often see that. And that's just the, that's just the way it is. You know, it's just the way it is. Um, but, but another thing I learned from doing YouTube is, um, when you hit milestones, do a giveaway or do, you know, do, do an incentive, you know, to, to attract more people to your channel, you know, um, what I have also learned is, um, and I've kind of seen this, not necessarily in the coloring world, but I've actually kind of seen this on different places in YouTube, like where people are begging for money. <laughs> um, oh, I've got a GoFundMe set up and, and I need money or, or I'm not going to, this is a touchy subject, I need money or I'm not going to be able to pay my bills or I need money because 
I have my rent to pay. Um, I've also seen it like another social media platforms. It's not just YouTube. It's not just confined to YouTube. Um, I actually saw um, there was a chat. There's a, and I don't know if it's still even around, but there was an old chat uh, messenger thing called ICQ. The letters I and then C and then Q. And it's, it's a, uh, if you say it, if you say it kind of fast, it's, it's supposed to be ICQ, you know, <laughs> so it's kind of, it's kind of a, you know, it's kind of like a clever sort of play on letters, I guess. But anyway, um, I used to be on that like years and years ago. I mean, this was like back in the nineties and there's one gal that, you know, that I had on my friend list that, um, she sent out like a, um, a group message to everybody on her ICQ list, like, oh, I don't have the, I, I, I'm so short on money, and I'm really worried, and, and I have kids, and da 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 And so it's not just confined to YouTube, but you find, you find people like on Facebook or, <clears throat> or you know, out there that just, um, they, they send these spam messages like begging for money. Um, and on YouTube, like I've seen, you know, I've seen it, um, I've seen it done like in video format, like, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, don't do that, folks. You know what? Just don't do that because um, it, <laughs> it, it, is, it is very unbecoming. Um, now, in the coloring community, and, I've, and I have the same thing, um, I've seen people share their Amazon wish list. And that's perfectly fine, you know, because I like going on and looking at other people's wish list and seeing what it gives me ideas to see what people would like to have and and so forth. Um, on the Sims page, too, like on the Sims 3 page, there is something called the Sims 3 store. And so there is a wish list. Uh, it's a place. The Sims 3 store is where you can get like extra content for your Sims game, like extra download content. Um, so there's like wish lists and all that. So you can go on other people's wish list and, and you can gift them items if you want to. Um, you can you can see what they're after. It gives you ideas to uh, things that you may want to get. And um, to me, that's, uh, you know, the Amazon wish list, you know, that works the same way. It just kind of gives me ideas of things that I may want to add to my collection, um, which kind of gets me in trouble, you know, <laughs> but, um, I love looking at like what other people, um, would like to have. Um, and so, you know, there's been people that have shared their Amazon wish list, and that is, that is perfectly fine. I do the same thing. Um, you know, we have our Amazon affiliate links and that is perfectly fine. You know, um, and, uh, what do I say? Um, that is perfectly fine, you know, because, um, then there's ways, you know, for folks to support your channel, but just to like out and out beg, you know, like, oh, I need, I need this money. And, and, uh, and, you know, just to try to lay on like a guilt trip, you know, that's not, that's very unbecoming. Um, and I don't, I don't buy into that. Now, if I was going to get something for somebody, I'd be more apt to get something for somebody that would totally be, that would, that would totally, um, um, what am I saying? I'd be more apt to get something for somebody that is totally not expecting it, whereas versus somebody that, um, that kind of begs for it or that kind of out and out asks people for it, you know. Um, I know that's a touchy subject and, and I and I don't want to harp on it or anything, but I know that's, it's a touchy subject and all. Um, but that's just another thing I learned from YouTube, you know, just, you know, don't, don't beg for money. <laughs> um, that is so unbecoming. Um, what else? Try to keep your content interesting to people. Um, Try to make your voice, you know, kind of sound interesting. Like, um, I find that, that I have a hard time watching videos where people are talking in a monotone like, Hi, everybody. Welcome to the channel. Here is what we are doing today. We are going to crochet. You know, I like I, I find it hard to <laughs> I find it hard to stay awake when when, uh, you know, when when the when the when a voice is kind of hard to listen to. Um, and not everybody has an animated voice. I get that. But if you can, you know, try to, try to put some life into your voice, <laughs> you know, try to put some life into your voice because that will, that will help, that will help keep people engaged. 
Uh, so yeah, that's, that's a few things that I learned from running a YouTube channel. That, that's, that are, those are a few things that I learned from running a YouTube channel. So I hope that was a little helpful. Um, I'm going to take a sip of wine. I'll get a couple stitches done on this row. Get a couple stitches done on this row and then um, I'll grab a sip of wine. I'm getting like a dry throat. I've been talking so much. I don't even know how long we've been going for. Mm. My camera automatically turns off after like 29 minutes so then I have to restart it. And I think I hit that 29 minute mark some time back. Huh. So anyway, what has everybody been up to? Um, what are you all coloring? I know I asked that a lot in my coloring gabs. What have you all been coloring? And um, let's see, what, what are you reading if you're reading anything special? Uh, what are you all reading? What I am reading right now, it's called The Dog Master, and it is by W. Bruce Cameron. And if you're familiar with A Dog's Purpose, like if you've ever seen that movie, A Dog's Purpose, um, that was actually, um, the movie was actually made from a book by the same author. That's, that's who wrote A Dog's Purpose. And I loved, 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 loved that movie. It made me cry. <laughs> and um, I, love the, I love the book. It also made me cry. And so I've had, um, now I'm reading it through Audible, like I'm not actually sitting down and, and I'm not actually sitting down with like the, the physical book in hand or on my Kindle or anything, but I am, I am listening, listening to it through Audible. I say reading because, it, you know, you are still getting through the book, you know, so I call it reading. Um, you know, those of us that are visually impaired that have, um, you know, that read books through an Audible audio program like Audible or um, the Library of Congress program, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, you know, we still call it reading because you are still, you know, getting through the book and enjoying that story. So I am listening to The Dog Master through Audible, and I've had that on my wish list for a long time. Um, I just hadn't gotten the book. Um, what I do is, like, I'm a member of Audible, and I get you know, credits. And so I kind of rack up the credits. Like sometimes I'll save the credits and rack them up and then um, I'll go through and uh, pick some books like off my wish list that I want to get. So I got The Dog Master and I'm, I'm not very far into it. I'd say I'm maybe like a fourth of the way through it. Um, but it is about, um, it's a fictional account of the first domesticated dog and how, you know, a wolf was, was domesticated. And, um, and it, it goes on to explain like ha the benefits to both um, both uh, dogs and uh, and and man. Talks about how how dogs came to be, you know, and uh, so it's a fictional account of that. And so I'm really enjoying it. I'm really enjoying it. Um, I definitely want to continue. I tend to um, listen to that at night, like on my phone, like when I'm just relaxing, like in the bedroom. I tend to do that. And uh, let's see, I got done reading and I, and this is a reread, you know, I've read it, I've read it years before, um, but I just got done with The Mammoth Hunters by Jean M. Owl. And that is part of the Earth Children series. If you're familiar with like uh, Clan of the Cave Bear, that is the third book in that series. So I have been reading, I just, I got done with that um, last or beginning of the week, maybe beginning of the week, and then I started the I started the Dog Master, and the Mammoth Hunters. It was good. Um, I like that series. I didn't really care for the last book in that series, The Land of Painted Caves, but um, I do like the other books. Um, she, the author Jean Owl, um, <laughs> the books get a little bit raunchy. <laughs> they get a little bit raunchy. So um, you, if you don't like, you know explicit descriptions of sex <laughs> um you probably may not like the series because you know she does get a bit raunchy but if you can get past it and enjoy the story for what it is it's it's actually a very good story so um i've had that for a long time um and i'd like to get my money's worth so there's times that i will go back and and reread or re-listen to something you know to get my money's worth 
Oh, that's another thing that um, that I was going to try on the channel like some time back was I was going to try to get into book reviews, but <coughs> I decided against that because what I have what I have noticed and you got and you know you guys that do book reviews maybe you can you can tell me if 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 you disagree with me or not. But what I've noticed with like a lot of BookTube is that um, people want like new releases. You know, people people are more interested in what's coming out that very minute versus um, an older book that's been out for a while. So now I know that there are reviewers that will do books that, that have been around for quite a while. All right, guys, sorry about that. My camera turned off. It turns off on me about every 29 minutes and I didn't realize it turned off and I was still crocheting along and chatting. <coughs> but um, I did go ahead and um, I took the footage off that I had on this and put it on the computer for editing. And I'll go back to what I was saying um, and I'll, I'll kind of sum that up in a minute. But I decided not to do BookTube because I noticed that most people want to hear about newly released books. And as great as that is, I mean, there's there's a lot of older books out there that are that are great, but people don't want to hear about those. They want They want all new releases. And so my thing is, is that yeah, I could get my hands on new releases through like Audible or whatever, but for me to sit down and read a physical copy of a book, I read slowly because of the visual impairment. And so if I was going to do a review, now if you're doing like a, a newly released book, uh, the publishers or whatever, you know, they or the people, like if you get a book from a publisher, they want you to review it within a certain time frame, um, you know, probably before the book is even released. Uh, but if you get if you get a newly released book, you know, people want to hear about it like, right away. <laughs> and because I read so slow, like I wouldn't be able to review it within the time frame of when that initial excitement is happening. Um, so I decided not to, not to do that because I just, I don't think I'd be able to fulfill uh, what would need to be fulfilled with that. So it's not that I wouldn't love to do book reviews, but you know, to, to review like a newly released book while that hype is still happening, it would be really hard to do. All right. So that is what I was saying about that. And I was just kind of chatting along and, and the camera wasn't even recorded recording. But um, anyway, that gave me time to refill my wine glass, which I will show you. <laughs> I got my second glass of wine. <laughs> I had to refill my wine glass. <laughs> And then also, I had a package at the door, so you guys didn't really expect a little haul on this video, did you? But we're going to do just a little mini haul here, um, because I did get a package in the mail. I did get a package in the mail, and I'm going to show that to you right now. I'm so excited. Yay! <laughs> I am so excited. So... And I'm just adjusting my pillow here. So as you can see, I got Spectrum Noir pencils. Yay. And I'm just I'm just adjusting my backrest here. I get up and, and I'm not comfy when I get sat back down here again. So I got Spectrum Noir pencils. Um, so this came today. My ups guy was here. Um, and so I was filming while it came. And so while the camera was off and while I was refilling my wine, I decided to go ahead and open my package. So let me just show you what we got here and then we'll get back to the crocheting. So I have, um, this is the color blend Spectrum Noir pencils. And there's five sets. There's like each, each individual set, but there's like five different sets that you can get in this line. So this, and they have like 24 pencils in each. This one is primaries. And I've gone ahead and opened them up and taken out the, the little uh, papers and stuff that were on top or the the the, uh, the padding or whatever that was protecting it. And I am I am gonna be taking them out of this tin, out of the tins. So there's primaries. Oops. Then the next one is naturals. This one is naturals. Here's what these look like, but these are going to be coming out of the tins and into a case. I have to buy a, a case for them. Then we've got essentials, and the tin on this one came pretty dented up. Look at that. It's kind of dented up, but the pencils were okay. Um, nothing wrong with the pencils. And they had like a little sticker on the tin, and it kind of got all... It didn't want to come off real well. It left a bunch of residue, which I hate when it happens. Then we have florals. This is florals. This 
there's florals. And then we have shades and tones. And there's what those pencils look like. Now I'm not gonna do any testing with them or anything today because I'm not in the right place to do that. I'm sitting here on my couch. But um, I did wanna go ahead and show you guys that because it did come while I was filming this video. Um, and I didn't really wanna just make one video just to haul these because um, you know even though even though there's a lot of pencils in here um, when I do haul videos I like to make sure that there's like several things but because I was already filming oops hit the camera here because I was already filming I decided to go ahead and and show them to you guys so let's go ahead and get back into the crocheting my battery's probably going to die soon but I'll do a little bit more and then we'll and then we'll, we'll go ahead and call it a day so let me just move this downward We'll do a little bit more and we'll call it a day. So that is what I learned from running a YouTube channel and I am on double crochets, row three. So that's what I learned from running a YouTube channel. Um, I know I might have touched on like a couple of, um, a couple of uh, touchy subjects, um, but I just wanted to tell you guys like things that I've seen, um, you know, things I've encountered. And yeah, so. And I, and I know, like, I've gotten questions about, um, I know I've gotten questions about, like, well, what do you do to start a YouTube channel? How do you make the videos? And, and uh, I'll kind of give you, like, a little bit of a heads up. Like, Katrina, my, my gal Katrina here, um, she wants to start making videos. She wants to, she wants to have a channel. And so she's been, um, you know, we've been talking a lot. Like, we talk on the phone, like, probably, probably a good, like, two to three times a week, you know. And, um. But she was asking me about like uh, you know making videos and and how you upload them and and all that and so forth and uh, so and I know I've gotten like other questions about like um, well how do you, how do you how do you start a YouTube channel like what do you do and and I'm I'm gonna move it down just a bit more um, what do you do like how do you you know what do you talk about like how do you how do you do it and I'm so nervous and um, I understand that because like. And I guess I'm a natural born perf performer because I'm a singer. <laughs> and uh, so <laughs> I'm just I'm just like my I'm just like my my little goldies here on the floor, Caleb and Alex. They are total ham bones. And I guess I am, too. <laughs> uh, you know, because I have that performance streak in me. But, you know, some people it comes a little bit more natural, too. And others, you know, they, they kind of have to work out a little bit because like they, you know, it's it is a little bit awkward to kind of talk in front of a camera. But a lot of people find that, um, you know, because they're shy um, by nature um, and it's hard for them to relate to people or to like talk to, to people. So they find that that talking in front of the camera is uh, is a lot easier. I'm trying to get it where we can see here. And they, they find that talking in front of the camera is a lot easier, um, you know, because you're, you're not talking to an actual person. However, um, it is a little bit strange, you know, at first to kind of talk to a camera, you know, when, when nobody's there, you know, it's, it's best. How, how do I explain it? It's, it's one thing to talk in front of a camera when you're alone. Um, and it is a little bit strange, you know, until you get used to it. But it's another thing to talk in front of a camera when you got another person in the room. <laughs> I mean, I have done it before. Like, my husband has been there when I film videos and stuff. But, you know, um, it you know, you just, you just, you just have to kind of practice a little bit, maybe record yourself a little bit, listen to it back, you know, watch it back, you know, kind of thing. Um, but most people that first start out, they are nervous. Most people that start out, they are very nervous and that is totally understandable. That is, that is a total natural, that's totally natural. Um, the more you do it, the, the more at ease you become with it. So the, the object is, you know, just, just keep doing it, you know, just keep doing it. And, um, you know, it's, it's going to evolve. It's not going to be the same as like what you did in the beginning. Um, it's going to evolve. You're going to do different things. You're going to maybe change a few things here and there. And that's, that's all fine and dandy. So I hope that what I said kind of gave you guys a little bit of advice. Like if you want to start your own YouTube channel, um, just some things to watch out for. Um, and, oh, another thing too, and, and let me let me um, let me touch on this a little bit too. Um, we talk about like copywriting. Um, you have to be careful, like what music and stuff that you put in your video, because um, 
you can get copyrighted. And I know I've talked about that before. And that is why, like, when I've been requested to sing and when I've sung on camera, um, I have to break up the phrasing because there's, like, these, these mechanical bots out there that are designed to catch stuff like that on every video. And if you get copyrighted, then, you know, you can't monetize your video. You can't monetize that particular video, and uh, you may end up with a copyright strike, which which is a, a big a big black mark, which is a big, um, you have a hard time overcoming that. Um, so if you put music on there, make sure that you have, um, music that is, uh, copyright safe or royalty free or whatever, you know, you want to get royalty free music. Um, also what else? What else? There's some, something else along them lines I was going to say, and I forgot. Um, watch out for your music, and, you know, you just do you. You do whatever you're comfortable with, and, you know, expect things to kind of change and grow, and, and, you know, expect a lot of improvement, because, you know what, like, videos I made... In the beginning, you know, like, I go back, and, and maybe I might rewatch it or something, you know, or go back, and I'm like wow, that was terrible, <laughs> you know, and boy, has, has that improved or whatever, you know, and even my coloring, like my coloring has improved greatly, you know, since I began that. So, you know, expect things to improve, expect things to grow. Um, you know, watch out for your, for your music that you put on there. Um, you know, don't put anything up that could be offensive, you know, that kind of thing like that. So, you know, Use some common sense, basically. You know, just use some common sense. You do you. You know, be comfortable with what you're doing, and um, and just and just do it. So I hope that was helpful for you guys. I hope that was helpful for you guys, and um, yeah. Because one thing about this community is that you know we're all here to to support each other, and we're all here to you know to help each other. <coughs> as much as we can. We're just all here to help each other as much as we can. So anyway, like I said, Katrina, you know, she wants to make her own channel. So um, we may be seeing some videos from her, which would be very awesome. Very, very awesome. Uh... And I think that we're going to be coming to the end of this video. I think I'm going to go ahead and finish out the row on here. And then that will be a good ending place, I think, for this video. So I do hope that you guys have enjoyed watching this and that you guys enjoyed the, the chat and the crochet, um, you know, what we were doing here. And I'm going to take a little sip of wine. I got, like, dry throat or something. I've been talking a lot today. I should be drinking water, I guess, but the wine is so much better. It's oh so much better, y'all. <laughs> I mean, water is good for you. You need your water to keep hydrated, but, but I love my wine. I ain't going to lie. I love my wine. <laughs> But yeah, I hope you guys have, have enjoyed watching this, and um, if you want me to do more of this, I will. If you want me to do a mukbang, I will. <laughs> yeah, I saw Shaleen do that, like I said, and that was the first time I'd ever seen anything like that. I will link the cooking video in the description so you can watch me make this chicken dish that I made. It was a lot of fun, and I actually need to make that again. It was fun. Um, but if you want me to do, like, some more cooking videos, I can do that. If you want me to do a mukbang, I can do that. If you want me to do some more crocheting, I can do that. If you want to see my knitting, <laughs> I can do that. If you want to see Caleb and Alex more, we can definitely do that. But, yeah, so if, you, if you're if you new to this channel and you hear me say, well, hello there, my little goldies, um, that is just my pet name that I call my viewers and subscribers. I love, 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 love golden retrievers for obvious reasons. And so that is how you all became my little goldies. So if you become a subscriber and a viewer, then you become one of my little goldies. 
And you can either call me Mama Goldie or Alpha Goldie or Mistress Goldie. I think I've been referred to as Mistress Goldie, and that's perfectly fine. <laughs> as long as you show me the respect that is due me. <laughs> <laughs> you can call me whatever you want. Just don't call me, um, you know what? You can even call me wino or rummy <laughs> because I love my wine. And um, there is this drink that we make in the wintertime. And actually, actually, I may, I may have one later on. <laughs> well, may, maybe not tonight because I've been drinking wine, but I may have one tomorrow night. It's called a Stonewall. And uh, what that is, is... Um, it's ideal, like if you use apple cider, but you can use apple juice. Warm it up. You can either nuke it. Do not put your alcohol in it yet, but warm it up. You know, warm up your apple cider, warm up your apple juice, whatever you're going to use. Nuke it in the microwave or do it like on your, you know, do it in a, however you want to warm it up. You know, make it, make sure it's like nice and hot. Once it is nice and hot, don't get it boiling though, because if you get it boiling, it's going to, it's going to burn off your alcohol. You don't want that to happen. So get it nice and hot. And then um, once it is nice and hot, you spike it up with some rum. <coughs> spike it up with some rum and you have your stone wall. If you want to, you can add like a cinnamon sticks to it, if that is your thing. But so yeah, you can call me wino, you can call me rummy if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't call me late for dinner because I get cranky when I'm hungry. <laughs> you don't want to be around me when I am hungry. And you don't want to be around me before I have my caffeine in the morning because I am not fit to live with, let me tell you. <laughs> oh my goodness. So we are almost at the end of this row. Oops. So yeah, I hope this was helpful, and I hope I didn't bore you guys senseless. Um, I've been watching this one TV show called uh, um, Gordon, Gordon Ramsay's 24 Hours to Hell and Back. And if you're familiar with Gordon Ramsay, like he's done, like he's a UK chef, like he's a he's a chef from the UK, and he's been known for like his his loud mouth like foul language and and this like when he's been in his kitchen and all that um <clears throat> very demanding you know of us people that work under him or whatever you know but anyway he he's got like several shows that he's had on tv and this 24 hours to hell and back is is kind of a if you're familiar with like his kitchen nightmares and stuff it's it's sort of like that but it's it's a different format where he goes in and he 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 cleans up, he helps and cleans up like these really disgusting restaurants that aren't making it anymore and that are on the verge of going out of business, you know, because they are so disgusting and nasty and, and the food is bad and stuff. And, uh, so anyway, I've been watching that, um, he's on his second season with that and I've been, I've been watching it and, you know, John and I were actually talking one day and his mom, I guess, used to work in a restaurant. And if you actually like go back into the kitchens of, I guess, most restaurants or whatever, then um, if you go back and, and look in there or whatever, um, it'll probably make you not want to go out to eat ever again. Because I think most of those kitchens back there are pretty nasty. <laughs> um, I th yeah, I think most of those kitchens back there are pretty nasty. And this one episode that I just got done watching today, it was just, ugh. Like, I'm visually impaired, and even I, um, there's like a warning on this particular episode that, um, warning, um, there may be content displayed that will make you puke, or that, that, that could make you puke. Dining while watching this is highly unadvised or whatever. Um, Gordon Ramsay had that little, um, disclaimer there. And, you know, I being visually impaired, there's a lot of things that I miss. But even I, you know, who am visually impaired, when I saw that, I was like, oh, God, oh, my Lord. I mean, I was like, just, oh. And, I mean, it was nasty, nasty, nasty. It was disgusting. It was just, it was like beyond disgusting. But like, um, you know, they were serving catfish that was like all slimy and soggy and just not good anymore. It was like, it, it was, I guess, not... Um, it obviously wasn't fresh, but it was like um, rancid. Um, they hadn't cleaned out their 
underneath their fryers in like years and years and this one guy said that he came in there one time and he and this is going to be really gross you guys I'm sorry I should have put like a ew gross warning on here but he said he was in there and he's seen like three ants drag a hush puppy across the floor I mean just ick 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 and I mean they had cockroaches in there um it was just ugh, ugh. you know it just I, I'm like you know what, like I like to go out and eat because, you know, there's times that I don't want to cook. But after seeing something like that, you kind of wonder. I mean, you, you actually, like if you if you go out and eat, you, you actually kind of wonder. You really do. You wonder. Um, and, <clears throat> I mean, if you go back, I guess in most of those kitchens, um, in most restaurants, you probably will never want to go out to eat again. And judging from like what I saw on that episode, I mean, it was just... <clears throat> And I realize that, that for TV purposes, like for entertainment stuff, like they pick the worst of the worst, I think. You know, because they're not going to pick something kind of middle of the road. You know, they, they, want the, they want the wow factor. They want the, they want the, the like larger than life thing. You know, they want the dramatic, you know, for entertainment, like on these, on these TV shows. So, yeah, I mean, it was just... So yeah, fair warning, if you watch um, Gordon Ramsay's 24 Hours to Hell and Back, you're going to see some just really gross, 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 gross things in there. <clears throat> oh yeah. <laughs> just a few more stitches and we are almost at the end of the row. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video now. I hope you guys enjoyed, um, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. And seeing what I was doing here. Go ahead and leave a comment and tell me what you think. Hit that like button, of course, if you like this video. Subscribe to this channel if you want to see more like this. Plus my coloring stuff, plus my journaling stuff, plus whatever. Uh, ring that notification bell so you can be updated of new happenings. You all have an awesome day, and we will talk to you in the next video. Okay. Bye, my little goldies. Talk to you later. Bye.